questions though. No, go for it. So hard pivot right here. We'd mentioned this at the beginning and I've it's been We're going back, back to my technology. Mind. So tech and morality. Ah. So I don't know if you saw yesterday. What, what's the name of the latest book, by the way? The future is faster than you think. Cool. Just because I think people are gonna find this interesting and want to get it. So. Cool. So Chris Matthews, I don't know if you saw yesterday, stepped uh -huh. down from Hardball. Oh. And he kind of just went on air and he says, I'm leaving. He does this in the first five minutes of his hour. So they're scrambling after this because he wasn't supposed to. Uh, you know, a lot of people in the past of my generation, including myself, said some things to women that are not OK, but it was OK at the time. But I'm sorry for it. So, you know, here I go. And y you get the impression that he made some uh, comments, as he says, that many men in his position at the time were making because it was morally acceptable, if not by today's standards, than by the 1950s, 60s, whatever. And so what I'm seeing is that our moral standards on the back of technology are changing rapidly because part of the reason that it was okay mm. to treat women the way that they were treated was because it was, it, it, it was at the home and technology changed in such a way that now we have an economic system that has women in the workplace and it's more obvious and they have more agency and all of a sudden that's not okay. So I'm, I'm looking at how uh, homophobia has gone from the most common name that somebody was called in my elementary school to this will stop your presidential bid, <laughs> you know, like in incredible changes in moral norms on the back of technology. And I'm just curious if you've thought what this means, because it seems like by the time that we're 20 years older, you know, in my case, 50, in your case, probably, you know, 50 as well. <laughs> I love you, man. <laughs> so by the time 20 years from now, that we're going to look back and, you know, the, the having eaten meat and having Instagrammed your meal, now that there's these uh, beyond meats, you're really going to look back and, oh my God, that person had a steak yeah, yeah, and he yeah. was flaunting it. I'm curious if you've thought about the moral implications at all at this rapidly changing technology. So it's, in, there's a, there's a, so that's a great question. And um, the answer is yes. Mm -hmm. And the second, the caveat is mm -hmm. I don't necessarily know how coherent what but we're going to fumble our way yeah, through a bunch fumble. of stuff <laughs> i like okay. fumbling <laughs> so um the first thing i have to point out is um the change we're seeing now to credit try to credit to technology mm -hmm. um and the generation that has grown up under technology is really doing a disservice to people who started in the 50s fighting really freaking hard for mm -hmm. this and into the 60s and the 70s. You mean the social the changes that we've yeah. seen? Yeah, I mean, you have to, so I always say this to people. When I got out of uh, high school in 1985, <laughs> I hated business. Business was like Satan. Mm -hmm. was, was did, And the reason was all the things I was interested in, passion, curiosity creativity you know like you couldn't you couldn't walk into a boardroom and say things like oh we're going to try to make this company more passionate mm -hmm. more creative forget like triple bottom down and we want to do a social good at the same time you couldn't have those conversations men couldn't have emotions mm -hmm. when i was a child in fact as a scientist i will tell you that emotions were not a real topic for science until 1996 when a guy named yak concept who's a neuroscientist at the university of washington brilliant genius um, who traced the seven foundational emotional pathways in all found in all mammals mm -hmm. so suddenly people went oh wow there's actual neurobiology these are distinct neurobiological systems that produce grief and produce anger and right oh this is a real thing suddenly you could talk about emotions like we have come so far so fast it's astounding and a lot of it happened without technology or with really primitive technology i mean if you want to talk about the largest shift one of the largest shifts in perception of African-American culture, and people don't like to talk about this now for obvious reasons, but was Cosby on mm -hmm. television. Suddenly there was a safe black man in everybody's living room and people could suddenly go, oh my God, black people aren't scared. I look, I can write Will sure. and Grace. And by the way, I know and the I people- I think these are massive transformations. And I know the people yeah. who created Will and Grace. They, did, they knew exactly what they were doing. They were like, well, we wanna do Cosby for gay people that's like yeah. it was it was done in i mean like great shows really good theater but like it was there was intentionality no there's someone the, trying to do this for people in the middle east and he literally goes on talk shows and he goes i'm, 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 trying, I'm trying to do, to do it for exactly animal rights what will and grace yeah. did. i'm trying we, we have a movement called dogs on film that comes out of my animal the animal sanctuary where we're trying to get hollywood to start including animal rescue and really simple dog rights don't you know 
don't go to a breeder and buy a dog. Mm -hmm. It's insane. Go to a shelter. We kill 20 million dogs a year in America, right? Don't perpetuate this by going to a breeder, that kind of thing, into television. Because it's the most, it's right. So, it's, and so, and that's a great example of a technological shift just speeding along these. But these and yeah, and my, so my point is though, it's not the new tech. It's the like, it's just that it's how do you share the information yeah, yeah. at speed, right? Is one two. Here's where things get really interesting, and this is what's sort of interesting, exciting, and this is the first time. I don't know the first time it was written about. The first time I noticed it, there was a book by Robert Wright. Um, who called non-zero and Cl when clinton was in office as president one day the story goes i don't know if this is true but it caught my attention that he came into work one day he had read non-zero and he said okay if you want a job at the white house by tomorrow you have to read this no, book no. <laughs> right, so the entire white house read the book overnight is my understanding i don't know if it's true or not but i love the story anyways he was the first guy he was a game theorist and i won't, won't go into it but he started to notice that society was evolving from playing zero sum games mm -hmm. which is like i win you lose to non-zero sum games either we both win or everybody loses mm -hmm. and the classic example is nuclear war right either we don't have a nuclear war and everybody wins or we have one and the whole world loses, right? Climate change is, is one of those games as well, um, kind of thing. And there's a lot of, so he started to notice that we were evolving that way. Steven Pinker has pointed out we're living in kind of the most peaceful time in the history of the universe, right? in his History of Violence book. And the Harvard Development Project, where they've been studying adult development for over 100 years now, discovered that millennials, for example, are as empathetic as at age 20, uh, 30, as my generation was at thirty to, uh, at 40 to 50. Yep. Right? So it's, that is, like, we're, our morality is fundamentally, like, shifting and evolving and changing and technology is speeding along. And I think what you're looking at, the, the hard, let's call it the hard wall reaction for, for, for lack of a better thing, is the pendulum always swings both ways. Mm -hmm. Right? You put an African American man into the White House, and it was followed. But right, like it's going to yeah. go back and forth. It's going to go back and forth, and sooner or later, it sort of gets to the middle ground. And it's funny because I remember we were like, like I was mostly late eighties, nineties. That was sort of. I'm an old punk rocker, and I come from the Midwest, and that meant like if you were weird in the Midwest, it didn't like there was there were no divisions. Like if you were a transvite like, communist, you hung out with the punks and the hippies, and because it was like we were like. Two thousand of us, and there were a lot, of them, <laughs> yeah, yeah. right? You and like, you couldn't be like, intersectional. You could, yeah, you, there was no like, like we just had to stay together because that was just us like that them. was the only yeah, way yeah. we were staying alive, yeah. right? Kind of thing. Um, and we always thought, oh God, our big breakthrough, right? Because every generation thinks they like push the ethics farther than. And we thought what we had done is we had like normalized, like in the '60s, we were doing this stuff, but they make a big deal about it. They were shouting, "Oh, look at me, equal right!" Right? Like it was really loud. And we thought by like our generation, it was just normalized. Like we didn't, we really like we just didn't care. You believe what you want to look how you want to look sleep with whoever you want like whatever it is we're like we're down we're fine with it and we just don't want to make a big deal out of it and we mm -hmm. thought oh wow this is progress that's and now we're like totally back to oh my god we got to shout about it we got to make a huge deal about it we have progress it's not fast enough we haven't gone far enough <coughs> god bless you and all those things may be right right i'm not i'm not disagreeing with that point of view um i'm just saying History is a funny way of repeating itself along these these lines, and whatever the technology of the time is, it seems to be advancing it forward. Mm -hmm. um, it and, is, and so yeah, and, and I don't know if you have any thoughts on this, but well, yeah, I mean, I just I, I think the way I see it is that what technology does is it enables the it enables the populace to kind of have a power, if that makes sense. So yeah, cancel sure. cancel culture can only exist because of social media, which is to say, if a big hotshot does something that um, someone underneath him feels uncomfortable about, well, they can't report to him because he's their boss. And if they go to a news station, they go, I can't report on this, I'll lose my job. But now they can just go to their own social media, which allows things to, to happen the way that they are. So that's the is what I there's see. No, with there's no course correct in the system, right? The course correct these days is Dave Chappelle. Mm -hmm. Right. That's the that and a couple other people. That's the course correct, and that's the that's what we have. Yeah. I mean, what we we figured out how to move things fast and change. But you know, he's not wrong. I'm not saying it was right or wrong, but 
They were different times. The rules were very, very well, different. That's kind the of what game I, was very, very different. That's what different. I see with a lot of these people who are, you know, tweets from 10 years old. It's, it's, I think a lot of people view morality as if it was this absolute thing and where we are at right. in 2020 is what it has always been and it and should have it, always been. What it will always be. What it be. will always be. Yeah, that's well, the thing that people well, get that's, confused and, about. And, you know, so, um, you guys probably don't know this, but I also write novels and to write the future is faster than you think because the level of technological acceleration is so complicated. And this book is about convergence. So it's converging exponentials. It's this accelerate robotics meets artificial intelligence meets 3D printing and what do you, and it was really, even though I've been researching this, I'm an expert in it, et cetera, et cetera. I couldn't hold it all in my head. So I wrote a, a sci-fi book called Last Tango in Cyberspace. Um, and there's a lot of these ethical questions. And one of the things, we're seeing for sure is, you know, one, we're gonna start seeing a keep humans pure movement mm -hmm. because we're gonna start being able to genetically augment this and that. And there's a whole punk rock biohacking movement where they want to cat's eyes and regrow tails and all kinds mm -hmm. of weird, right? But that's all, like people are working on it and it's coming and sure. we're gonna, right, we're hybrids and all that stuff. And so we're about to discover a whole bunch of new hates we've never had before yeah. and then we're having to overcome them and that's so you know just seems the other the other thing nobody you know with the intersectional stuff the brain whenever the brain meets another human being it asks a found anything it asks a fundamental question is this thing like me or is it not like me mm -hmm. and if it's like me i can cooperate with it and maybe we can make more resources i could have sex with it and maybe we can make more <laughs> me or if it's not like me maybe i should run away from it or maybe i should eat it right that's the fundamental question the brain is asking is it like me or not like me with brain does us them primarily because it has helped us survive and the fastest way to get the brain to put an us them is to put a name on it mm -hmm. so it's a double-edged sword, right? I now we're coming back into the psychedelic I, realm. I like this. I mean, I, but I love the like, <laughs> the labeling. like if we look at what's going on with sexuality, right? We now have seventy different gender pronouns and different ways to represent groups, and that is a whole bunch of people saying, "Hey, look at me! I'm something different. I'm, I'm uh, you know, I've got a distinct, and I've got rights, and all those things are true, not disagreeing, like absolutely accurate. The problem is the minute you put a name on it." you are creating it's, an us it's them divide separated. like you're literally the very thing you're trying to overcome you're fighting against the way the biology works and i'm not saying there's a right or wrong in biology is right and we're like we can evolve beyond that but i'm saying you know in peak performance as i said earlier much of it is trying to get your biology to work for you rather than against you mm -hmm. and so i think about these things this way i think about the ethical questions from a biological perspective and how do we make it work that way it seems it seems to me that the us them question almost at its core is do i is this me do i identify with this is this my nation is this my people is this my uh person who shares a belief as i do and you you talk about the I forget what the words that you use, but you talk about this layer of interconnectivity that's going on all around planet Earth such that our thoughts and emotions via Twitter are being transmitted instantly, but even faster than that once we get these the Elon Neuralink. Musk Neuralinks in it such that I can feel what other people are feeling. And weirdly enough, it's not even a question at this point of, is this person like me? It's almost instantaneously, this person is me because if, they're, if their thoughts are occurring in yeah, my head. Yeah, those are, that was my right hand and my left Peter hand. Peter and I went to that. So the book is really focused on what happens over the next 10 years. And we go mm -hmm. industry by industry, right? We don't go too far out. But the last chapter, we look at the 100 year view and we look mm -hmm. at when the way we did it is by looking at migrations because migrations are one of the largest forces for mass change in history. And we're entering an era of like five of the biggest migrations in human history are all starting to unfold right now. And one of them is the brain computer interface migration into like this hive mind yep. world. And it's not, I don't think it's, this is not next week. This is not, this may not even be 2030s, mm -hmm. but the technology is moving shockingly. I, like I, I, nobody, 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 nobody was more skeptical about brain computer interface stuff than me. Yeah. And, um, but I started when I read Charles Lieber's original research out of Harvard that Elon Musk is building his technology out of, I was like, holy crap, this is a lot farther along than I, like now this is a problem of scale. It's not a, can it work? No, it it works. Like it, it already mm -hmm. works. It's can it, how can we scale it up? 
that's an entirely different set of problems. Weirdly enough, it is, it, Twitter is happening. Now, granted, it's through the medium of me reading text that enters my brain creates a feeling. But if somebody tells a, a harrowing story on Twitter, they can instantaneously essentially create By the way, feelings this is of where compassion. The, this is where the term empathy came from. Mm -hmm. Originally in the 1800s, this was the problem they were trying to solve. It was art theory. And they were mm -hmm. like, how the fuck does a painting work? Mm -hmm. I look at this photograph and I somehow feel what the photographer was feeling mm -hmm. when like it's the photographer's emotion when they took the photo transported through time. Yep. How does that work? Right. It's the same. It was and the it's same getting question. faster and the yeah. scales occurring. So uh, the, one of the things that I feel like we almost have a model of this in you said it's happening faster than ever. There were at one point only single celled organisms. And then I assume over the course of millions and millions of years, they started cooperating in ways that eventually became indistinguishable from multi celled organisms. And I feel like we're at this point in human history well, where we are. Yeah, well, that's, I mean, that we, I, we're at that. Can, we that, made that. that, that uh, I think we said this in bold. We made a similar mm -hmm. argument in bold, but you're taking it into future and faster, and you're mm -hmm. totally right, right? The history of evolution, the history of cooperation, mm -hmm. right? Like each, each great step forward is involving some kind of foundational leap. And we don't think of it that way, right? We don't think of the fact that the human body is, you know, we're a multicellular organism. Mm -hmm. It's a huge cooperative entity. In fact, honest to God, this is a legitimate question um, in flow science. So flow is optimal performance. We are made up of a lot of non-human organisms, right? A mm -hmm. lot of bacteria, yeah. a lot of viruses, a lot of stuff that are not human. And so the question we've been asking is, when we say optimal performance, does it mean that all the biology that's inside of us this is optimal? Is like, is the microbiome, right? Are the organisms that are not human working for the benefit of the, like, When what the red blood cell mean? goes and kills itself to prevent an invasion, I mean, is that optimal performance? Is there this sense of self that has transcended any of those individual it's cells? Interesting, right? And now it's, I mean, we've seen that with armies, you know, sacrificing themselves for the good of the nation. But I feel like we're at this crazy thing, because when I read The Future is Faster, or at least parts of it, I got very scared. I was like, there's no room even for me because you talk about how there's these cameras that can view micro expressions on people and instantly tell you what they're thinking, feeling. And I was like, well, there go charisma breakdowns. Uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> I see what you're but saying. It but me. it won't matter. <laughs> That's the thing that I take but, away from it is but, like, there'll be no scarcity of resources. I'll be able to plug into VR with my haptic suit and we'll have a singularity. I won't need a job. Yes. I won't need charisma on command. Yes. I'll just be part of this big... <laughs> organism where my thoughts are everyone's thoughts but the but once again <laughs> like you're not losing you at got, that but point you really got, like you're the, winning but there's still the joy you're you guys have so much fun figuring out why matthew mcconaughey is charming yeah yeah right like like you're gonna be doing this for a while because it's what you do it's a way mm -hmm. of thinking about the world that's fun and i think that point is like we get to do more of what we want to do right and it's um we get there the hard way it's uncomfortable work technological unemployment is going to remove a lot of kind of blue collar you know the they're not the they're not that i had was like this is the end of me being useful in the ways that uh, i'm so conditioned to being useful and of, of everybody but i guess we have to find new ways to become maybe not useful but just i don't i don't know what the new verb so is. so i will tell you i will tell you um i came up as a journalist and i uh this, these new terms aren't going to mean anything to you, but I was what's known as a new, new journalist. New journalism was a movement in journalism in the 60s and 70s, and I was part of a, a revival group of journalists in the in the 90s. Used, most of us were on staff one way or another at GQ and Esquire mm -hmm. uh, by the end of it. Um, but it was a style of long-form narrative writing, you know, 10,000-word articles, 12,000-word articles. And it... By 2007, it was gone. Like, two, but it was just gone, right? Yeah. So, Matt, how angry do you get when you spend 30 years becoming best in the world yeah. or something, right? Literally, like best in the world, top 100, yeah. top 200, top 500, whatever list you have, and suddenly it's gone. I was so for like about six, seven months. I'd never actually like had real deep seething rage that lasted a really long mm -hmm. time um, probably other than how I felt about my parents growing up. I was up. just going <laughs> to say that. I was just going to say that. Way. Sorry mom, dad. Love you. <laughs> Love you guys. But yeah, okay. I, uh, yeah. Um, uh, but no, so when you, you know, that is a real thing. Like when, you know, I watched my industry go away two different times. Uh, it hadn't occurred to me that you've experienced yeah, this because you're like, a journalist. Yeah, when one of the reasons, I, you know, I feel um, okay to talk about some of these things out loud because I really like I did 
you know, lived through a bunch of them. I've experienced the upside. I, you know, mm -hmm. I, I helped found one of the first online magazines. I mm -hmm. worked on the very first video game that had biofeedback. We've like I was mm -hmm. in a lot of the startup early, early, early San Francisco stuff, and I got hit by it as well, and you know, got my ass kicked by it. So I think I've been on all sides of it, um, and I will tell you that a big topic of research for me is you wanted to know some of the stuff that I'm focusing a lot on. One of the things that I focus on now a lot is what I call long haul creativity, mm -hmm. which is how do you maintain high levels of creativity and innovation over the course of a really long career. And I'm interested in one, people who have sustained their creative talent and continue to nurture it and grow it and that way, or people who have reinvented themselves in fifth act, sixth act, mm -hmm. seventh act, right? And there's still like, how do you do that? Yeah. And how, right, really fascinating to me. It's a whole different set of skills than actually just What have you found? I'm, I'm personally interested because I feel like we're at the end of an act. You know, like I feel like we've done our thing. I've, I've So I was taught, I was, we can cut things in and out. Yeah, of yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, okay, so Rian actually was talking a little about you guys, and I said something. He's like, "You should tell them." And I was like, mm -hmm. "I don't know if it's my place, but mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you, and you yeah. can cut it out if you want." Which is, he said, "You guys were going to get it, move away from the videos, and bring in script scripters and things mm -hmm. like that." And I, what I said is, I hope they don't do that. Mm -hmm. I hope instead they lean deeper into their craft. And what I meant by that is. You guys have only started to scratch the surface on the science of actually what's going on, and you're great at it. Nobody's breaking. Everybody I see who's doing charisma stuff or any of this stuff is trying to do what you guys are doing. You guys are better at it than the rest. You have a market advantage. The science that you've already been dabbling in, I that's where I would lead. That's I I'm, I don't know you guys. No, I that's don't know I where appreciate. You go, I, but I, I literally feedback. I was like, oh, I want them to double down. <laughs> I was like, no, no, no. I want them to like go go deeper and don't don't outsource this the, the craft. Double down on the cra the stuff that's great. Outsource the stuff that sucks. Mm -hmm. um, so so in relating this to what you said. And